Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Today I want to have a little play around in my junk journal and I specifically want to use catalog and magazine images to add throughout my journal and to make little th special things that are going to go inside my journal. So I want to uh, show you how you can use catalog images to beautify your journals, to add interest, to add journaling spots and so on. So I've already done some things like this before, but I want to take it a little step further and just show share the process with you guys. First, I will make a few and I will speed up that process and then I will go ahead and add them throughout my journal and hopefully it's going to spark some inspiration in you guys. All right, so before I begin, I want to show you what I already have. So I've already done these and I keep them in a little baggie. So I always have things to go to and they're all backed onto some sort of a paper or cardstock at the back and then you know it's ready to go into pockets to be journaled on the back and it's just a beautiful little embellishment that I always have on the go and that can always come to. So I want to show you my process and this is what you guys will need. All right so the first thing you might want to go and hunt for in your house are catalogs and magazines and some books so what I've got over here is a gardening catalog and it's got some beautiful images a lot of them have this sort of price on this so I can't really use those ones but then again uh, then I have things like this see these beautiful images here and I just made like a little stamp faux stamp kind of thing so and they can be you know glued onto a page for a little embellishment or in a pocket or it can be a tuck spot that sort of thing so I've got that one and I also have these are really beautiful these are like cross stitch catalog so they're just uh, a whole bunch of things that you can go and buy making your own cross stitches and things like that but I really love these images and I can be using them in my journals and that's what I've been doing so there's that one this one's also the same but it's nearly I nearly used most of it so far then this one here is a quilting magazine and it's got some beautiful images like straight off something like this for a large journaling spot or you know something like this and there's lots of things in here another good one is card making magazines and you can find a lot of them at op shops and secondhand stores I know all of them are closed at the moment but you might have some in the house already so it's just images of cards that other people have made I'm not scanning them I'm using the original from the magazine so I can do that I would never go and scan it and make my own printable or something like that so look at this like this beautiful um, journaling spot in a journal it looks amazing so that's another good one if you have those card making magazine and then this one I've got I just pulled it out to show you I already wrote myself a note on what I can use it as but basically it's a carpet catalog and all these carpets but look at them they, they make beautiful journaling spots so what I'm going to do now is I will speed through a lot of this process but um, I'm going to show you what else you will need and how I do it and then I will speed through the process of actually doing it and come back at the end to add the images into my junk journal so Another thing that you will need is something that you want to back your images onto. So you can have random pieces of paper like this lined. You can have some packaging. This is good. See that white cardboard? Perfect. I'm going to use that packaging. And then also tea dyed paper. But I use um, tea dyed paper that, that I don't need both sides on. So I use like scrap paper that I tea dye. And I leave my beautiful tea dyed papers like this to use in journals you know as pages so I wouldn't use this cutting it up for this project so these are just some of the things that you need of course of course you will need your glue stick and sewing machine but it's not a must the sewing machine okay so what I'm going to do now is find a few images that I like cut them out and then I'll talk to you about the next step look at these images they're all images of cards but they make such a beautiful little postage stamp I'm gonna make I'm gonna cut those out perhaps on another day all 
I guess you could always purchase printables and work with those and cut them out and make journaling spots but the thing is I don't I've never worked with a printable before and the main reason why is because I don't have a printer that you know I can print black uh, black pretty good but pictures and colors and things like that not very good at all and you know I was considering maybe taking it to a printer and but you know it gets very expensive and I think we can be creative with things that we have around the house and those of you that like to watch my channel you know that I always like to come up with ideas on how I can use what I already have so this is one of those things okay so I've chosen my images that I'm going to work with the next thing I need to do is glue them on to my whatever I want to back them with and because I want to use them as journaling spots and you know this is very flimsy paper so it would also give it some sturdiness so I'm going to use one of these tea dyed papers from I don't know what that was and I'm going to glue it on and trying to you know use up the whole page really so I'm just going to protect my desk and now I'm going to start gluing so if you don't want to sew you want to make sure that you cover the whole surface of your image with glue I will most likely add sewing because I think it just adds so much beauty to the finished little product I guess and also to minimize my cutting I'm using all of my straight edges that I already have so I just want to see approximately where I'm going to be gluing them I'll probably have paper left over I usually cut out enough images to cover a whole sheet of paper all right now I have glued all of my images on and they're glued down nice you will see that there's some buckling on the paper and that's okay it does as you've seen here it does flatten out and it's curling up at the moment because it's not dry yet I might go over it with my bone folder not necessary just thought I might throw that in there and now I'm going to go ahead and cut them out and I'm going to cut out a perfect edge I'm not going to leave any extra paper around okay so I have cut out all of my images at this point you can call it done if you don't want to go to the sewing machine they are curling up at the moment that's fine if you leave them aside for a little while under something heavy it will be straight they will straighten so the next step that I always like to do is of course sewing around and I usually use the blanket stitch which is you can see over here the kind of stitch that wraps around the edge so I like that stitch because then I know there won't be any separating of the two pieces and look at these beauties so I just used whatever thread was in my machine which is very dark brown but perhaps this one would have been you can't even see it it would have been nicer with uh, a white stitch but that's okay uh, in video you can't see it but in person I can see it so now what I like to do is just tie little knots over here and or you can just cut it off but I like to tie a knot just to be sure and then cut these little uh, strings off so I like to employ the use of my little tool over here or anything sort of pointy and I use it to help me tie that knot all the way preferably at the back of the card and they are done and the little extra bits are all cut off they're already laying flat probably because I put it through a sewing machine and now I'm going to go into my journal and add these little beauties so just in case if you're wondering you absolutely can use these in journals that you sell because you're using the original image you're not copying it so that's absolutely fine if you want to use some little bits and pieces like that in pockets and things I've already got one here from from another session and I'll put this cardstock paper on the back for journaling it looks cool I wonder if this this looks quite busy I'm not gonna put it there let's see what else have we got 
I decided to use this one as a belly band over here, in which case I could have put any paper at the back to make it sturdy. So I'm going to glue this down. Glue it down and then I'll just wait a little bit for this to dry and then I'll come back to add something in into the belly band. Okay, I have a pocket here, so I think if this one will fit, it will. I will use this one here instead of a tag. So it will just serve as a journaling spot instead of a tag. And it looks quite nice. We can use these, this is a collage that I did. We can use these as our focal images in our collages. I could use this one here on the back as another pocket, but I really want to leave it as an actual journaling card. So I'm going to go through, back into my journal and see where I can clip it on so that it can be a journaling card, maybe, maybe something like this. I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to use that for journaling. This is always on here. I never take this off, so that will, that will work. I might clip this one on here, another journaling spot with this bead with a little paper clip. I added a bead on there and while I'm at it I'm going to add something here as well. Add a little bit of bling. There we go, a little bit of bling and now I'm going to use maybe, let's see what else can I, this looks quite nice right here. But I changed my mind. I don't want it there. I'll find another spot for it. Just in there. I think I'm going to glue this one down here. I might make it into a little pocket. So again, um, even though I'm not using the back as a journaling spot, I can, you know, uh, this backing that I've backed it onto is still making it stronger. So because that magazine page is very, very flimsy. And then if I'm using it as a pocket and putting things in and out, it would rip very easily. Whereas now it's, you know, secure. So it wasn't all for nothing is what I'm trying to say. Happy with that. And now this one, what can I, this one looks good here. And now I feel like I want to use some of my other stuff that I made. So maybe I'll just add a couple more in my journal. This one can be a little tab over here. That one can be a little tab. Perfect. Perfect. This one goes really well here. I already have something in there, so I'm not going to add it there added a bunch of journaling spots into my journal. I'm going to go back to the ones that are made into pockets and put something in there. This one looks good here. I'm going to pop that in there. Very quick and easy way to embellish a journal. That's for sure. I just love this journal because I can just, I can come in and be creative in it and add things and it's just getting so chunky. And when I started it, my goal was to get it as full and as chunky as I possibly can. So it's full of treasures and goodies. I think I might put this in there. This is just an envelope that I made, made a little while ago. I have a video, fabric envelopes. And then I might put this little piece of paper that I had right here. Hmm. Another little place to write. Pop that in here. Another little treasure to be explored. I might have to trim it down a little bit. As you may know, the journals that I make to sell, I like to leave a lot of space. I don't, they're not overly embellished like crazy or anything like that. But for this personal journal that I, this is, I do have a separate journal that I write in, but this is my I write in here as well. But I also play around in here. So there's a lot of little things to pull out and look at and, you know, like, look at this got some tags, tags happening. We've got some more writing spaces over here. It's just fun. You know, that's the whole point. It's to have fun. How did I do it like this? I have a video on creating this. Okay. I wanted to put something in here. 
Maybe this little tag will work. Let's see. Perfection. But I'm going to just embellish it a tiny little bit. Maybe I'll put a, pop a little bit of something in there. Maybe a little bit of stitching. And here we go. That looks mighty fine, I think. I can always come back to that, and I probably will, to write on it, to embellish it further. I think that looks cool. There's so many surfaces left for me to work on in this journal. All this writing waiting to be done. So much fun. So much fun. Look at it. It's so chunky and full of goodness. I just love it so much. It brings me joy. That's why. If you want to know why, why do you do such a thing? It's because it brings me joy. Now I want to show you how it will look in a journal that's for sale. Let's have a look. This is a journal that I made in my What Steps to Follow When Making a Junk Journal tutorial. I will link it. So uh, the journal is already made. I'm not selling it as yet, but I just wanted to talk about a few things. Let's say you are creating a journal that you want to sell. So I have something in here already. And, you know, you might use some of these to put into your pockets. Maybe that one's not the best. Let's see if this one will look better. This one might look better. You know, and you'll have all of these little pockets. You might want to fill. What's this one? Is this one something? No. Here we go. So what I would do is, if you're adding these in journals that you're selling, I wouldn't go crazy and use a whole lot of these in a journal. One or two in a journal that you're selling, I think... It will look good and will be enough you don't want to overwhelm with this sort of thing because it's you know it's magazine images basically so something like this so you want to have you know you have your other things in there you'll have your envelopes and your tags and all that sort of stuff and then you just use a couple of these in a journal and you're good to go you might have seen this journal in a few of my videos uh, there's a lot of a lot of things in here so um, just adding little touches maybe something like that maybe something like that you know let's say this one will open up and then you can have a little image there you know just subtle little touches in your handmade journal but don't overwhelm the journal with uh, just this thin pockets like this you know that sort of thing I hope I'm making sense. I hope that makes sense to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, if you have card making magazines, get to them because look at these images. Like they even look 3D because they're pictures of cards that were 3D. So um, it looks amazing. And it's a finished little piece of artwork in your journal. Look at this one. This is a card that somebody made and I'm just using an image from a magazine backed it onto a tea dyed paper and voila no need to you know buy fancy stuff when you've got magazines laying around so uh, another reason why i also suggest that you don't go and embellish the whole journal with this is one it's not going to look good and two i mean you're not breaking any copyright laws but keep in mind that something like this somebody else created this so you don't want to use somebody else's work throughout your whole journal. Uh, so one or two in a journal, perfect. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you feel inspired. It's not anything new. You probably already do this yourself, but you might feel more inspired now to go and create some little beauties. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you in my next video. And this one's upside down. Get back. Okay. See you next time. Bye.